My name is Rebecca Munlin. I was first diagnosed with MS in fall of 2010. A couple months after that diagnosis, I got a second opinion, and then I was diagnosed again in January of 2019. I do think there was a time that I wasn't very clear on my purpose through the, the, the self-care that I've experienced in the last nine months and through the opportunity to live my, my, my life's purpose, I found my voice and I didn't realize how powerless I lived prior to recognizing that I do have a power for my life and that if I'm living fully in my purpose, then it is easier for me to feel that I have power because I'm doing what I was made to do. And that's to serve and encourage others that they too have a voice and they, they too have power in their lives. My name is Sarah Thomas Pilcher. I was diagnosed with MS in the summer of 2010. I think everyone has a time in their life where they don't know their purpose. Uh, in that time, I think you're just in a moment of being lost. You're young, you think you're gonna live forever and you're invincible. I think you have a idea on your path or purpose that you're supposed to go on, but then something happens in your life. And for me, it was getting diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. When I found that my purpose was to teach yoga and teach it not just to a healthy group of people that are they're flexible, can do everything, but also a whole nother group of people that need it. And it's not just limited to just this healthy, happy person, but also a person that might have a disability, need to use a walker, need to use a wheelchair and branch out that way. I found that my purpose was to help the disabled community and awaken the world about the needs that they need and awaken the disabled community about yoga and meditation and what it can do for their life. My name is Yata Thompson. I was diagnosed with MS in April 2007. I never expected that illness would be a part of my journey. I remember I was working on my PhD when I found out that I had MS and I was devastated. I had no idea how to deal with this. I believe I probably went through all four stages of grief, but it was through some divine connections that really helped me get myself out of the rut that I was in. Also a lot of prayer. I'm still here. Regardless of what I have been through, regardless of falling down, I've gotten back up and I'm still here. And it was those things that really helped me find who I really was supposed to be and where I was supposed to be going. And I'm really thankful for that because I believe that even with MS, I'm a much better person than I was prior to. I'm creating space because the space that I'm taking is truly my space. The path that I've been on in the last year and a half or so has been such that it's one that I discovered that I was, I was giving my power away. And once I realized where my power lies, it has helped me to serve in the capacity in which I believe I was made to serve. And that is as a coach and empowerment and wellness consultant. And so at, when I'm doing that work, that makes a place that's perfectly fit for me. I'm not trying to fit into someone else's idea of who I am and what I'm to do and what I should do and what should be acceptable. I'm a person of faith and my faith, my God tells me who I am and what I can do. Where I progress, um, where we've kind of been at a standstill or what they say, a pause, I feel like I kept moving, but I started moving more in the virtual world. I built a YouTube page. Um, one of the fun parts is I've gotten to be on the Dr. Oz show with Deepak Chopra talking about meditation. And it's been a mon monumental moment for me and also learning how to modify yoga postures for our community. I think I've been progressing and moving forward and not really standing still at all, but just keep moving in a way that is positive and helpful to everyone in my community. I believe that I'm navigating life and making history at this time by just simply moving forward and not giving up. Each day I wake up, I show up regardless of how I feel, 
I may fall down, but I get back up and I keep going. I've also been able to use the gift of trading to advance me financially during a time where jobs were ending, businesses were closing. Um, that's a skill that I can always take with me. Also, one of the other things that I've done is I've created a brand called MS Beauty. It came from my love of makeup. What it means to me in MS Beauty is someone that is beautiful on the inside and they're strong, they live life on purpose despite what they may be going through, which in this case, of course, is MS. And one of the Bible verses that really inspired me is she's clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. That's something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to be able to inspire people um, just to show them that even with MS, you can still live your life and you can live life on purpose. And just doing the things that I love to do. The diagnosis does not define who you are and that it is just one characteristic of you as a person. And so I would tell that person to find what is positive and joyful in life despite having the diagnosis of MS because MS does not define us in any way whatsoever. In fact, when you only look at MS, all you see is disability and what might be limiting, even if you're experiencing discomfort and pain and sadness and frustration. But the fact is you woke up this morning and perhaps you have family members in your life and that you're getting the care that you need and that you have a voice, you have something to say. But if you only see MS, it is very difficult to live out your purpose and to live life to the fullest. And so when you take your eyes off of that one limiting aspect of your life and you focus on those positives, those joys, and, and, and when you, joys can be the sunshine this morning, the sun was out, I woke up today, I had a meal that I enjoyed. I had a phone call from a friend. There are so many things. And once you begin to focus on the joys and those positive aspects of life, then there it feels like it begins to multiply. And it may seem like that the MS begins to shrink because that is not the primary focus. I would say to your African-American trying to deal with having MS is don't give up. You're not alone. You might feel alone, but you really are not. There's a huge community out here who is here to welcome you, who understands what you're going through. Be open to learn from those who've had the disease for five to 10 years and have really understood different medications that change through the whole progress of things and what they've done to better their life. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to make that party or that wedding. Give yourself grace. Allow yourself grace. Be open and you're not alone. What I would say to another African American with MS struggling to persevere and fulfill their assignment, I would say that if you're looking for a sign, this is it. Don't wait to get started until you have everything all together. Just go ahead and get started now. If you work with what you have, the rest will come. Use your talents and your gifts to impact others' lives. There is something on the inside of you that someone else needs. Your purpose is bigger than you. Don't deprive others of that. Just be you. Celebrating Black History Month is important to me because in this country, I feel like that the contributions of African Americans have been overlooked or minimized. And I think it's important that our contributions to America should be honored, celebrated, and acknowledged. Celebrating Black History Month is important to me because we celebrate our leaders and the great strides that we've made here in America. The education, the leaders, and the things that we've done with our art and music and science. It's a great time and I think it should be celebrated not just in February, but every day. But I enjoy Black History Month. Celebrating Black History is important to me because it's a time that we pay homage to our ancestors, those who have gone before us 
those who have contributed to our society in ways that a lot of times we don't necessarily think about. And we just shed light on the things that they've done for this country and the sacrifices that they've made so that we can be here. My name is Rebecca Munlin, and I am Black History. My name is Sarah, and I am Black History. My name is Yata Thompson, and I am Black History.